Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. In today's video, I'm going to be installing an hour meter on a log splitter. Um, the way this hour meter mounts, you can mount it on just about anything with a spark plug. This one does require a spark plug, so no diesel engines. Um, it works off the inductive forces generated from the spark plug, I'm guessing. Um, they also have hour meters that work off the battery, and you obviously need to hook it up to the battery. This one's just really easy because you, you literally just coil it around the spark plug boot a couple of maybe like five times or something. And uh, when you crank the engine up, you know, the spark plug's generating a spark and the wire picks it up and it starts to count. And there you go. Um, hour meters are really important for things. Uh, it lets you keep up when you need to change the oil, how much time's on your machine, air filter, spark plugs, etc. Any kind of maintenance, valve adjustments, all that type of stuff. Um, I, I generally put hour meters or have hour meters on just about all my equipment except for like a push mower that I can think of. Um, they're just important. They're a good way for me to know, like I said, when to do maintenance. Um, let's go ahead and get into how to do it. It's really simple, straightforward. Shouldn't take too long. Let's get started. Okay, so here is what the hour meter looks like. It's just this little rectangular piece. Um, it's got two holes to put the screws through and it's got the wire that plugs into the sensor and wraps around your spark plug. Um, in this case, you really got to plan out where you're going to mount the thing. Um, I can't mount it here, you know, because it's muffler and this valve cover is probably going to get hot and touch the wire eventually. Um, and plus, if I drive this thing through brush, can't mount it here because this pivots up and then ripping the wire out. Um, the best place that I see for this particular machine, and you'll have to think about this for any machine you do, is uh you know where you're gonna mount it but you know the best place that i'm thinking is right here on this air filter cover this does pivot up and it's got a little hinge on the back but i could mount it somewhere here or here i'm probably gonna mount it on the top so i can kind of just see it and not have to lean down not that it's that big of a deal but i can just route the wire down and wrap it around the spark plug boot and you do want to leave enough room so that you can unplug this when you're changing your spark plug and you also, in my case, since I'm going to be lifting this up, I need to leave enough room on that. Probably just wrap a zip tie around it or something like that, but we'll figure that out as we go. So I decided to mount the hour meter on top of this air filter cover here. It will be easily visible and just as well, the wire will be nice and tidy, not sticking out or anything like that. I can do my wraps, run it straight up through here, and you lay the wire in this groove so that will be perfect. You don't want to drill holes and all that type of stuff. I'm because I'm going to end up drilling holes to you know for these screws to go in these two holes. You're going to need to take this cover off because there's an air filter in there and you don't want plastic going in the carburetor, especially if this thing's brand new. I've never used it. That would be awful. So I'm going to take this cover off and mark these two holes, and we're going to drill two holes. And I'll show you the screws that it came with. This is what it came with. Um, I don't really feel comfortable using these because over time these things are going to vibrate loose because engines vibrate like crazy. I don't know if you knew that. But uh, I had some of these laying around. I'm going to use these with washers, lock washers. And I might even put some thread lock around there just to be safe so that this thing doesn't vibrate loose. Going to take this cover off and we'll go over to the table and get these holes drilled.
and that's all there is to that. We got that mounted now. I'm gonna get some side cutters and cut that little excess sticking off, and then we'll figure out our routing of the wire once we get this mounted. Now that we have the hour meter mounted to the cover, we're ready to put the cover back on and get this wire wrapped around the spark plug. Um, all I did here, I kind of did this just spur of the moment type of thing because this is right next to the muffler. I just put a cable tie mount. It's just a double sided tape kind of deal. Stuck that to the air box and it's not perfectly straight. Uh, I might end up removing that and straightening out. But anyways, um, I just stuck that there and zip tied all. This is the entire wire. I haven't cut anything or anything like that. I just coiled it up. You put the zip ties on, double sided tape time out stuck it on there and then zip tied that down um and we'll wrap the rest around the spark plug and i might cut a little bit off but the reason i left this is in case i ever had to do any type of maintenance from disassembling things and all of that type of stuff i can just snip these zip ties and have plenty of wire um so yeah that's why i did that so let's go ahead and mount this and get this mounted the spark plug We have our five wraps <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and take the excess here and zip tie it back to this wire to make sure it doesn't come loose or anything and uh, and then we'll cut the excess off there. And I'll cut this off. We'll leave a little bit extra just in case, you know, because if this comes back through it'll uncoil. We don't want that happening. And then I'll just cut this excess of the zip tie off here. And there we go. There it is installed. Everything finished up. And you can see, flip around camera, what are you doing? As you can see these numbers right here, there's a little hourglass. When this thing's running, I'm thinking this hourglass, most of them, I'm thinking this hourglass should flash, like on off on off maybe every second or something like that but it will only do that when the engine's running obviously because you only want to record the runtime um so what i'm going to do to test this is we're going to start the engine up and we should see this start to count um this is in one tenth increments so a tenth of an hour is six minutes so to increase 0.1, you would need to run the engine for six minutes. I'm not gonna run it for six minutes because if this is uh, cutting on and off, we know that it's counting, right? So let, let me get this thing crunk up, cranked up, crunked, whatever you wanna call it, and uh, we'll see if it's counting. I would say that's a success. You guys saw it flashing. That means it's counting. It doesn't look too bad. It's easy to see. Um, when I'm starting the engine or doing whatever, putting gas in it, I can easily see the time. And uh, I like, for example, this machine, the first five or six hours, you gotta change the oil. So I know when it hits five hours, I need to change the oil. And I know every hundred hours after that, I gotta change the oil. So it's just handy because you don't have to deal with writing stuff down. Not that I, I don't know anybody that does that because that'd be a lot of work and a lot of upkeep. But uh, you don't have to write it down. You don't have to take mental notes. You can just look at it. And if that thing ever goes bad, you can, if it goes bad at 600 hours or something, you can just scratch 600 in there and then put a new hour meter on and the counting starts from there again. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. I hope you guys got something out of it. I know this is something important that people don't really think about, but these things are pretty cheap. I'll, I'll link in uh, the description of this one. You don't have to get this one in particular. This gives you an idea of what to look for. I appreciate you guys watching. Like, comment, subscribe. See you guys in the next one.